uh, we'll see how many questions you can do. And if there's enough people, we might even do a private stream. I mean, a private clash. So, yep. Let's just uh, take part in a random public clash right now and hope for the best. Okay, I guess the clash is starting right now. Oh yeah, if you're interested, this is the uh, some oolong tea. I find it quite nice to drink. No sugar. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, let's see. Shortest mode. I'll use track type script to clash with uh, Murat and Kick Spider last time. Alright, let's uh, go back to Ruby. Okay, which naming style is the variable? So, it's either snake case, camel case, or pascal case. Okay. Okay, so camel case, the first letter is not capital. Okay. Uh, Pascal case, the first letter is capital. Snake case contains a dash. Okay, so let's just... Okay, so... Okay, so let's say we have put S, okay, we print snake case, we do the snake case first. Uh, so over here, if it is, a, I think we can do this. Yeah, if it includes a dash. Okay, so let's see string includes method. I think there's such a method for strings, like string input method for Ruby. Yeah, I think there is such a thing. String in Ruby, so it, it... Yeah, so we could do this. If it includes this, then print out snake case. If not, okay. Over here, we just bracket it. Uh, over here, um, we have the... Camel case or Pascal case. So we just need to check whether the first letter is capital. So um, how do we do this? We can use a match. Okay, so M0. Okay, so match. Let's see Ruby match method. Okay. So what does it return for match method in Ruby? So if we match, if it doesn't contain, it will be a nail. Okay. So in order to check whether it's capital, we can just match it to see whether. It, I think this is like that. Yeah. We can check whether it's a capital letter, which is A to Z. Okay. So if this one is not equal to nail. Okay. Okay, then we print. That means if it's if it's not a capital letter, then we will print the. We will print is Pascal case. Else we will print it as snake case. Hey, sorry, I will print it as camel case. Yeah. I think this should do. Let's see whether it works. Okay, I think I need a question mark over here. Yeah, I forgot about my question marks. Okay, maybe I will need a bracket for this thing here. Unexpected string literal containing not a function in line 2. Did I miss out a close bracket? I guess I'll need to close bracket this one. <laughs> Maybe a question mark. Oh, okay. It's a short 
form for match like this. No includes, so it's include. Undefined method for life is good string. Okay, so we got this set up. Can I put this like that? No, I can't. Can I do it like that? Okay, I can. So it looks like it's okay already. Let's see if I can like, shorten it even more. Okay, so um, over here we do m dot include this question mark. Can I put this one space less? Yes, I can. Okay, just thinking whether I can take out this bracket here. I don't think I can, but we will try. Okay, I can't. <laughs> so this match, uh, whether it returns nil. Actually, I'm just thinking whether I can, you know, do a dot nil over here instead. Should be any another question mark here. Okay, so this one like that. A space here. Okay, so how to check if object is nil in Ruby? Yeah, let's just check this one. You can call dot nil on the object. Nil dot nil question mark. So it's technically possible to check whether something is nil. So I think we can just do a dot nil here actually. Like that. This is what I think we could do. Unexpected line, not a function. Okay, is, is this syntax wrong? Like I cannot just call this dot nil here. I mean if, let's say I was just switch it with nil dot nil, does it work? Then maybe I don't need this question mark. Invalid arguments expected given one expected zero. Okay, it's fine. Uh, we'll just just stick to the original. I mean, I could try this and see if it works, but it it doesn't seem to work. So invalid string literal. Okay, now now something is wrong with this entire thing already. I need to give a space here because the nail question mark is a is a method by itself. So yeah. Okay, I'm just submitting. 89 is not too bad for shortest mode. I know this can be shortened even more, I guess. If I use uh this get as I can just put it directly here and then here I use dollar backslash. I could save probably one character. And this put as I could use the dollar greater than backslash uh smaller than smaller than this uh will save one character. But I think it's fine for now. We don't have to, you know, we maybe regex. Yeah, yeah, that's fine also. Hi, Kate Spicer. <laughs> yeah, I saw your follow yesterday. Thanks for following. Uh, we just wait for a bit, a few more people to come in the stream to before we do private clashes. Because right now I have about two viewers. Shortest mode again. Okay. Um, max has W per L meet meters long on which there are n bushy trees today each of the n bushy trees have radius r casting the shadow i'll put the shader area s when sun is at its zenith the zenith is the topmost i believe i don't get the question actually <laughs> w by l n bushy trees n has a radius r Okay, so if, if the sun is at the top, the shadow will be pi r squared, I guess. So I guess we just need to take pi r squared. I don't know, it could just be pi r squared for like one tree. Let's just... Okay, let's just do do this okay let's uh dd dot split okay dot map n to f uh to floats 
Okay, so we can map the WLNR. Okay, let's just print out this stuff just to make sure that it's correct. Okay, so it's correct. So um, just wondering Ruby Pi whether there's a math.py or something so I can you know use the constant instead of instead of uh, defining it myself. I think there is like math pi like that. Okay, so let's see whether this works. Okay, that works. So can I just put out pi without the do without the oh cannot. Yeah, I need the namespace. Yeah. So let's just try to print out pi r squared. Pi times r times r. Okay. Pi r squared times the number of trees. <laughs> let's just try to do that. Okay, so that will be 0 0.78. Uh Oh, I'll put the unshaded area. So, so I need the first two also. W times L minus this. Yeah, it looks correct. So now I just need to make it to, um, make it to two decimal place. So we just do string formatting like that. Okay. Um, I guess I need to, to do this variable like that. Zero point two one. So that means I need to do a put s. Okay, looks good. No tree in the area. Nail can't be coerced to float. Oh, there can be a missing value. Oh, it's integer n for the number of trees. And one float r for each of the trees. Okay, so it means that here will be a, a variable actually star r maybe yeah then it could it could either be one or zero or or anything so so it's, it's not as simple as this r squared times n we need to actually calculate r squared for each of the n's yeah we need to calculate r squared for each of the trees so as we take them in okay we need to map something so actually we could just do a map okay maybe you can just do r dot map Okay, uh, dot map, uh, we map to its, we can map to its squared, and then we can just sum, actually we might as well just do the r dot sum like that, yeah, so this could actually replace this thing here, yeah, so by doing r dot sum, we sum its squared, okay, we sum the square of r, uh, and then add it up. Okay, so now when we do this, we end up with 6.00. Okay, so you see when it's rounded to two decimals, actually 6.00 .00 is correct. But I guess uh, if it is an integer, they want us to... Okay, let's just see whether it works for the rest. Because I think the only case when it's an integer, it's... Okay, so there are two cases that we need to set off. Okay. I go Sava. And we can play a private clash later. I think that's enough people. Yeah. So over here, this is minus 1.8. <laughs> I cannot do such a simple method here. I need to check whether this is more than the zero itself. Okay. So maybe what I can do is I can do this comma zero dot max. And this, this should solve this problem. Okay. So now after I do this, I need to convert this to an integer if it is an integer. If not, it will be 0.2f. Okay. So print float as integer will be if, uh, if it can be rounded. Okay. This I want to do in Ruby. Yeah. I guess we could round the float. Okay. But the thing is, we don't know whether we, yeah, but maybe I could do this times 100 dot round divided by 100. 
the problem is if it's like points if it's zero we if it's zero we have problems because if this can be uh, sorry if, if this is like 0 0.00 we have to check whether it is uh, uh it can be rounded off or not so one way to do this is we can store this i mean no choice we have to do this we can store this as m all right okay then we can put s okay if m okay if m can be represented as an integer like that okay then we print out m dot two i okay else we print out point two f of m yeah we could do this to you know oh uh, i'm using this thing called uh twitch studio yeah one uh unexpected local variable or method okay so hmm, maybe i need a bracket for this Yeah, okay, so the issue is with the m dot to i over there. So if we do this, yeah, I also need another bracket for this. Such a waste. Yeah, and this. I wonder if that's a shorter way to do this. Yeah, I wonder if that's a shorter way to do this. Let's just try all the cases. Now Now it works for everything. Yeah, it's just that this, this looks a little long, so not very happy with it but this this one is okay i mean you sum up all the square pi r square of all the trees this one is needed w times l is needed and then we need to do a zero over here because we don't have a negative area here we need to check whether it can be fit to an integer if it can then we print out the integer okay i guess uh one thing that could be done is because this m dot to i appears so many times right okay we can do we can do something like that. Z equals to m dot to i. Okay, and then here we can just do z without the brackets. Uh, that might actually save some space. And then here, I guess, I'm not sure whether I can put this all the way at the front because the put s might treat it as a function. No, nope, we cannot do that. So we have to do something like that. Mm. Okay, so it looks like we can't, we have to do this. Yeah, another way to do it is to do m dot round two, like, like this. Yeah, we could also do this to round it off to two decimal places, but it's too long. I prefer the f string format. This format is much shorter for shortest mode. Yeah, I think this. Do you have any ways to shorten it? I, I'm actually done with this. I'm happy to submit this code. Okay, let's submit it. Oh gosh, I got something wrong. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I thought it was okay already. Uh, I passed all their test cases, but apparently something went wrong. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah, uh, that means the the training cases wasn't very well done. Yeah, it, it, it just means that, um, yeah. Okay, I think we have enough people. Uh, we can actually do a private clash. Oh, sorry, wrong one, wrong one. Yes, let me go, let me go. Why do I keep going to this window? <laughs> I should be going here, start a private clash. Yeah, you know, they say the best way to, to improve is to code. So yeah, if you want to improve your coding, you can code together with me. Yep. So this is the link for the room. So yeah, welcome to join in. It's okay if you, you have difficulties coding in, in any language, it is okay. Yeah, the idea is just to, you know, have fun because, you know, <laughs> it's just a game. 
<laughs> it's not like it's life or death for this clash of code. Okay. Kate Spicer, are you there? Yeah, I thought you wanted to join. Okay, if not, we'll start. Okay, let's not waste time. Yeah. Uh, no worries. Yeah, then you can just watch. Yeah, I want to like do as many problems as I can in my limited streaming time. So let's push on. Okay, use whatever language you want. Okay, use whatever language you want. Uh, the goal of the problem is to generate checkerboard patterns on an old terminal display. You must display the required checkerboard patterns. Okay, so this is actually kind of simple. It's just printing out ASCII art. Okay, C, R, W, and H. You need to take it. Uh, R is the number of rows checkboard. W is the width. H is the height of the rectangle. C is the W is the width, and H is the height. Oh, so there's actually a width and height for the checkerboard pattern that you need to print out. Just wondering whether I can suck certain symbols inside. Okay, no, no worries. Let's just try to solve this uh, using normal methods first. Uh, we split the input because uh, that's the good thing about Ruby. You can do this and then you can just map all of them to integers because Ruby allows this. So good stuff. Ruby is good stuff. Oh, oh, I saved it. Okay, so once we have all this, we realize that the width and height are important because this will actually tell us what to suck. Okay. The width is actually okay because I can actually do uh, G sub, but the height height is tricky. So uh, the height of the rectangle, I need to repeat the row two times. Yeah, so let's see how to do it. Okay, let's see how to do it. Okay, suppose I don't care about the height first. Okay, let me just do the, the row and the column. So... Um, for i in c, actually this this will be quite long. So I'm more of a fan of doing the this approach. Yeah, but if I do it like that, uh, I'll just use the normal one for i in zero to to row. We do the row first, okay, and Okay, for J in zero to column. Okay, let's just let's just try to do something. Okay, maybe like row equals to this. Okay, then over here row plus equals to okay, uh I plus J percent two equals to zero so if let's say it's an even parity or we can do it like this okay we check whether this happens that we append a zero if not we append a one okay this we just do a simple pattern first uh let's just print s or here is put s we print our row and we see whether we can get yeah so we get a checkerboard pattern now zero one zero one zero one okay so over here instead of doing this okay uh we can replace with hex and uh, hex and tilde like that. Yeah, so we got hex and tilde edit. Okay, so uh, we need to multiply this by oh, actually, I thought of a more efficient method to do this. We can just put this as a string, and then this will be our index. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this works. Yeah, this will be our index. So let's see. So this is correct. Then we can just multiply by two or multiply by the width of the rectangle. So we get the width of the rectangle already. Okay, why is this wrong? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. Um, I'm printing out an extra row here. Okay, so. Zero two four is zero one. Okay, let's just print i just to see what i is zero one two three four. Okay, so actually it looks correct. 
why is it wrong is my oh i'm printing out one extra thing here so in the columns one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight nine i'm printing out one extra column and i'm not too sure why is that the case um column is eight so i should be okay actually i should be okay i'm just printing out one extra column for some reason um why am i printing out one extra column <laughs> Let's try to analyze this. Okay, why? Where is the issue with this? Where is the issue with this? Mm. Where is the issue with my extra hash? I don't know. Maybe, it's, maybe it's it's the issue of this, like this, this uh thing. That goes all the way to C, so we don't want that. So if we do this, success. Okay, so now we need to. Oh. Okay, let's see what it should be. Okay, so I need the double row. Okay, so over here, we can also put S multiple times here. So, um, can put S R times uh type I guess. Okay, so over here, yeah, we need to do a separation is a space. I mean, if I do it like that, it will separate with a, a new line automatically. But because if I do like this, it doesn't exactly do it. One way to do it will be to just do this. Yeah, so I guess this is a working code for now. Okay, let's try to shorten it. I think we can shorten this middle part here with a for each with, with a each statement like this. Okay, we can we can do this. Okay, dot each. Okay, something like this. In fact, we can even do a dot map, and then we join it with we join it with this. Okay, and then we can put as this. So let's just delete this whole thing. Quite confident this can work. Okay, so uh oh. Okay, so instead of J, we need to do a underscore one because it's inside here. Okay, so that that actually uh makes makes the thing much lesser now. Okay. Yeah, since you see we need to do this h times, right? We can actually combine it with this. Yeah, we could just do something like this. R times h. Okay. And then we basically do this i divided by h here in order to get the... Okay, so... Um, Maybe I'll do zero until like this. Maybe this will work better. Okay, so um this thing is proving a challenge. Okay. Uh we need to swap the index now, I guess. Yeah, so we can also do like that, then that will save some uh save some lines. All right. And then uh I think we can even Put this statement inside. <laughs> you want to see what I'm doing? What I'm gonna do? I think I can even shorten this. This is eighty nine characters, right? I can even do it like that. Dot map. Okay, we can do this whole thing. Okay. Over here, we need to do a bracket. So just now it was 89, right? So we could do like this.
here will have to be okay so i can see a potential issue here because my i i need to do a variable here for i and then we have a double map like that so perhaps it will be prudent to just not do this map because i think it takes up a lot of characters uh, we could just stick to our initial idea like that i think this is already quite optimized if you ask me yeah i think this is already quite optimized I'm just thinking whether if I do a dot each here. Will it be shorter? You can do it like that. Yeah, it's extra short. Yeah, we should do it like that. As a pity, I cannot do this underscore here. I mean, if we want, we can even do a, a dot map. <laughs> we can map it and it will be even shorter. Yeah, I think, I think this is good. This is pretty short. 86 characters, uh, I think it's quite good already be able to do this python is definitely going to be longer so i think this is this is short enough uh, 86 characters i think hard to beat uh, if we were to use python to code it uh, we can do something like this uh, c r w h equals to map in input dot split okay for i in range c range r for j in range c Okay, we, we can actually do this, the same thing, like something like string equals to this. Okay, string plus equals to x tilde i plus j. Yeah, we can do some, we, we can do something like this. Okay, times with okay. And then we we repeat this. Yeah, this will be the Python code to do it. And we can even shorten it even more. We can do list comprehensions actually. This whole thing can be a list comprehension. So uh, what we can do is like this. We can print, okay. something for i in range r that will be our outer loop okay so over here it will be something okay yeah we can put this inside our inner loop for j in range c so we print out this one okay this one uh, we will need to sort of flatten it yeah so you need to do something like this something dot join this one okay so after that we need to separate this out by a slash n so just simply do a star here and then uh Oh, very, very good code. 107 characters only. That's very efficient. And you're using Python. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so um, over here, we still need to do like range C times H. And then over here, this will be J divided by H. Yeah, okay, so we need to probably repeat this code.
Okay, I don't have time already. So <laughs> let's just uh, submit our Ruby code. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Who is this puny? Very nice. 83 characters. That's awesome. Yeah, and Telling also did very well. All of you are pros. You are hidden pros in disguise. Okay, let's see Puni's code. Oh, you just did an eval. And translate. Uh, okay, I'm not too sure what this does. Eval plus translate a blank to a comma. Okay, so you, you, you did this to a comma. So equals to... Okay, so... So you basically put all this inside this CRWH. Is this shorter than this shorter than my code though? I think yeah, yeah, it's shorter. Yeah. Shorter. Interesting. This is how you map them into variables. R times H times, and you do this. Do one divided by W. Oh, okay. So actually, uh this kind of looks similar to my code. But instead of times I use dot map. I guess both works. Mine is probably shorter. But yeah, my back part of the of the code looks shorter than yours. But the front part you you, you yours is definitely shorter. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, Python, let's see. Very nice. Yeah, probably you can shorten this even more by putting like thumbs up do. Okay, so uh, I in range R print this for J in. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, you can print this whole thing out for J in this. So this prints the number of rows for the rectangle. Nice. Okay, let's do again. Uh, where am I? You are quite good. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to do shortest mode. I think shortest mode is the most challenging mode that you can do in Clash of Code because it requires you to know a lot of tricks of the language you are using and yeah you you'll be able to discover new tricks as you as you go along okay shall we begin as usual use uh, any language you are familiar with uh, there's no need to purposely code in a certain language i mean i don't mind doing random code challenge but uh we need willing people who are willing to do it <laughs> like murat all right kate spicer also yeah a single line address containing name city, name street city state zip code. Name street city state zip code. I guess we have to do some sort of regex for this, right? Okay, let's let's try let's try let's try to break it up. Okay, so get us. Okay. Dot uh, scan maybe. Or we can do a match actually. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's say let's say we have this. I'm just trying out. Okay, we just do the we just do a capture group that captures letters, spaces, and hyphens. So letters, spaces, and hyphens. So um letters can we can actually use slash p slash p I remember there's this thing. Okay, slash ah, slash p l. Uh, it means letters. Letters, spaces, and hyphens. Okay, 
any amount, okay, we capture any amount, okay, then we capture in the, okay, let's just capture a random thing, okay, I just want to see whether we can split it into two parts, zero, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. We can do reverse next. <laughs> okay, so uh, something wrong with the match method. Let me just check Ruby match method. I want to split the string into into the captured components. Okay, let's search how to split string into parts using regex ruby yeah yeah i like to split the string into multiple pieces using regex I mean, I can use the scan, I guess. I'm just thinking how to use a match method, but I guess we could just use dot scan. Yeah, so this split to this and this. Yeah. In fact, we could just you know do it do it. You no, know, in a list like that. So like that, we can we can just join the list with with this. Yeah. So that's that's good already. So Joe Smith one two three, Main Street. Okay. So um, there needs to be a space in between here, so we can just do a space here. Yeah. That that will okay. So a space here, and then there will be a space here also. Okay. Next will be a street. We'll always start with a number. Okay. Let's see. We'll always start with a number. Okay, multiple times okay okay star means optional so we want to make it a plus a plus means one or more times okay and in the following street drive boulevard or highway okay so uh, i guess we need to hard code this part uh. <laughs> i guess we need to hard code this part so uh so we need to do a uh, something like this street drive boulevard yeah, i guess it's maybe a bit too long maybe we could just take the last three letters So let's type a few numbers, okay, and then after that, end with this. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess I just do it once, okay, and uh, space. Okay, let's just let's just see what this gives us. Okay, so that's good. City consists of letters, spaces, and hyphens. So it's similar to this one, right? Will always be two capital letters. So um, here we'll capture in. Actually, since the, since the last two are 
definitely going to be like in a chunk, right? <laughs> we don't even need to specify it. We can just we can just do this. Yeah, it will definitely capture everything it is. Okay, so something is wrong here. Oh, I have an extra thing here. Yeah. The last two we don't have to. <coughs> Oh, no, no problem, the prophet. Yeah, just join in when you can. Why is this crazy thing wrong? <coughs> <coughs> oh, ends with highway, okay. How do you end with new? Because here you must end with you must end with highway over here given the rules. Okay, so I guess if I put a plus here, I don't know whether it Rejects ends with Yeah, something like this Lions Tigers. Oh, okay, so I need to do a a bracket instead of a curve bracket instead of this bracket. Uh, but I hope it doesn't capture it though. <laughs> yeah, I see now now if I do it like that, it's a capture group. So I need to make it a non-capture group. Yeah, so I, I made this a non-capture group. Just thinking whether I can do one up and just you know use even fewer characters. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Actually, since this is going to be like a group of whatevers, right? I'm thinking that even here, we can even do a group of whatevers. Okay, I'm not sure whether this will affect anything. Yeah, because this will match greedily. Yeah, so since this match just greedily, the last three will also be there. I wonder if we can do a what a, a list of whatevers also for the first one. Oh, we can, we can, we can do a list of whatevers. Yeah, you know what? We can even do this, I believe. So. Can do everything in one line. Yeah, I think this this is very concise, and I and I like it a lot. Yeah, this this looks good actually. This looks good. So yeah, this list of whatever's is fine because actually, because uh, when we do a greedy regex, we actually already solve for all this. Okay, now I'm just thinking, can we like do one up and just use the last letter like that? I mean, this is very risky. Some cases might fail. Oh, <laughs> it works. And if, if that's the case, right, actually I can just do it like that, P-E-D-Y. Without this bracket here, we could do something like that. Yeah, all right. Very concise. I, I like I like this. Yeah, we can even do uh, we can even use this method to even go go even fewer. 
Yeah. Capture, 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 capture. Yeah. Yep. Okay, submitting. I think I might get some wrong. Oh, I got everything right. <laughs> I'm just being lazy here, like using as few characters as possible. Uh, if you were to do a regex, uh, an actual regex, it is best to specify fully the constraints that you would like to do um, so that you do not fall into a trap where people can abuse your system. Okay, but I guess in this problem, um, they did not really do a very robust check. Like they didn't really check stuff that doesn't end with like street. Put another word that ends with T, you know, that might break the regex. Yeah, but I guess it is probably fine because yeah, regex is a greedy matching, you see? So I try to greedy match this one. Unless the city name starts with, ends with a T or so, then this will fail. But you know, see, I kind of cheated their regex system by just only matching this one exactly. Yeah, I'm just thinking whether, you know, if I do a 0 to 9, then I do a, maybe I do a dot plus here. No, that, that wouldn't work. It definitely must start with a number. So, so I think that is, this is necessary. Yeah. All right, let's see. Bash. Yeah, this is actually the proper way to do it. <laughs> I kind of cheated. A to Z, star, star. You could use a plus or so, yeah, no difference. Yeah, non-capture group to do this. Very nice. Uh, this, is, this is similar to what I did. Okay. Oh, I could have saved on the plus here. Yeah, you're right. You just need to start with a number. You don't need it to do a plus. Over here, you did a non-greedy matching. I think that's uh, not really necessary. Okay, I think maybe yes, it's necessary because no, actually it's not necessary. There's no chance of a number here, is it? So this having this number here will definitely separate it into the next group already. So there's no need to do non-greedy matching. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go. <laughs> it's okay, telling. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks so much for playing. I have to go already. And uh, yep. See you all again on Thursday. Okay, bye.